in righteousness and true holiness. We are commanded to be holy. But God said, be holy for I am holy. We are commanded to be perfect. But Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Why is God holy and why is God perfect? Because he has no sin dwelling in him. So it was God's desire to create a being such as us to live as he lived. But he, grant, he gave us, he gave us one of the greatest gifts. He gave us one of the greatest gifts and that's a conscience. That's a conscience so we don't be programmed like the cars that we drive. But God is still in full control. But he gave us a desire. He gave us a, a, a conscience. Not to follow our own desires though. Let's get that right. Not to follow our own desires, but to follow his desires. And that's to please him. We are created and built to worship God. And if we do anything against that, it is sin. Anything against what true worship is, is sin. We are, we are created to bow down to our, our, our everlasting being, a creator. Our creator. We are created to, to, to reverence God. We are created to let him know that he is wonderful, that he is great. But no, we want to follow our own desire. Our desires doesn't get us anywhere, but it gets us in enmity. A friend of the world is enmity against God. A friend of this world is enmity against God. You have become God's enemy by following your own desires. So now, with our desires, we desire to we desire to uh, have sex outside of marriage, which is fornication. We desire to have sex with another partner while we're married, which is adultery and fornication. God bless you. We desire to idolize cars, idolize houses. We even desire to idolize another man. Idolatry. What brings idolatry? What begets idolatry? Pride. Pride begets idolatry. Lust begets idolatry. When we desire, when we desire to do things our own way, when we desire to follow our own plans, it's idolatry. So not only we become under the sin of pride and lust, now we're also under the sin of idolatry. Total enmity against God. That is the sin that God has sent Jesus to save us from. Now, are we going to follow the perfect example that God has left us? We have a choice. We have a decision. So, one thing that man is, is, is under the influence of, man is under the influence is that we have free will and we have free decision. If our decision puts us against God, is it free? If our desire puts us against God, is it free? I think not. So now, since our desires and our plans puts us against God and we're not free to make, to follow those desires, and to go with those decisions, then what should we do? Shouldn't we follow this great and wonderful being that who created us and be no longer under sin? I think so. I I can um I actually can uh testify that because I was under that myself. I was under sin. I was living a life 
destined for hell. Matter of fact, now I'm still destined for hell. But because I choose to follow my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I choose to let him make me better each day, I'm destined for heaven. Now, do anyone under the side of my breast want to be destined for heaven? I can tell you how to do it. Put away sin. Put away your own desires. Put away your own plans and pick up the perfect plan and the perfect desire of our maker, our heavenly father, God. Jehovah Yahweh, whatever you want to call it. Pick up his plan and pick up his desires. And then we'll be more like him, we'll be more like his son. So, now that we have pride and lust and idolatry, which also puts us against one another, it puts man against man, which brings hate. If you're under hate and you're cursing people, cussing people out, willing to fight people, you're still under sin. That's also sin. Some people may say, I'm not under sin because I do good to people. Just because you pick and choose who you want to be good to doesn't mean that you are free from sin. It puts you in a greater risk because now you're under partiality, which is another sin. Yes, people, we have sin after sin after sin after sin after sin. The practicing of sin sends you straight to hell. Hell is real. People don't want to hear about hell. Hell is real. And if you don't follow what Jesus Christ said do, that's where you will go. That is where you will be. But how about God does not want us to be in hell. He wants us to live in heaven in eternity, in eternal heaven with him by doing what he says do. Find you a nice church home that will teach you the truth. That will teach you the truth of what God wants you to do. Not what man wants you to do, but what God wants you to do. Get baptized and get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you will be on your way to heaven. But just because you got baptized, just because you got filled with the Holy Ghost, that doesn't mean you're safe. Now you have to practice righteousness. What is righteousness? Right living in the eyes of God. Now you have to do what God says to do. And he gives you the Holy Spirit to give you the power, the power to stay out of sin. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to practice righteousness. But that goes back to what I said. It goes back to desires. You have to desire the will of God. You have to desire the wants of God. You have to desire what God desires. And that's holiness and righteousness. So, I love saying this part because I say it all the time. So God left us an instruction manual. The very thing which man does not want to pick up and read. Because they used the excuse, man wrote the Bible. Man wrote the magazines that you read. Man wrote the history books that you believe in. Man wrote the biology books that you believe in. Man wrote the science books that you believe in. Man created the schools that you send your kids to to be up under bondage. But you don't want to go to the school called the Church of Christ and learn for, of righteousness and learn of holiness so that your souls can be saved. But no, man don't want to pick up the Bible, what man wrote, but you want to pick up these other books. The new, you want to pick up the newspaper every day and read about the horrible things that are happening in this world because of the sin that we are up under. Jesus! 
Because of the sin that we are, are up under is the reason why we have newspapers. Because of the sin that we are, are up under is the reason why we have these magazines and all these lying books. So now, God left us an instruction manual that he used man to write through his Holy Spirit. Can no writer of a history book, can no writer, no writer of a science book, said that God led them to write that book. It's a lie. It's a lie, and that book is those books are, are traps to keep us under deception, to keep us under sin. So now we pick up this instruction manual and we read it. And we ask God to open up our uh, knowledge, to open up wisdom and understanding so that we know exactly what he want us to do according to these words that he left us. So now, why would God leave us an instruction manual? Because God tries to speak to man and tell man. See, y'all don't believe, a lot of people don't believe that God speaks to us. Yes, God speaks to us and through us. So God wanted to speak to man and tell man through his voice, through the perfection of his voice, through the perfection of his spirit of what he wants us to do. But because man wants to dwell in sin, God's voice was terrible to them. They couldn't withstand the pureness of his voice. They couldn't stand the pureness of his spirit. So now he left us in destruction. Matter of fact, they you know what they did? They told Moses, they said, Moses, you go and speak to God for us. You go and you speak to God for us because his voice is too terrible. I can't stand it. But now, because they don't want to do the things that God told them to do, now they want to hold Moses accountable. Because man is too much of a coward to hold God. As a matter of fact, you can't hold God accountable. So now you want to blame it on another man. You want to blame your sin on another man. Because someone uh, did something that you didn't like, and then you retaliate or you react in a sinful way, it's their fault. See, that's what man does. That's what man do. So now, because man don't, do not want to hear the voice, the pureness of the voice of God, God left us an instruction manual to follow. And we have to follow this in his instruction through Jesus Christ. But how about we got these instructions from God's walking, living, and breathing word. For in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word is God. So now we follow the Holy Bible because this is what God wants us to do. But if you start following what the Bible says and do it with a pure heart, do it to not be a sinful man or a sinful woman, you will be able to hear the pureness of the voice of God. And we'll be able to walk out of sin. We'll be able not to follow the desires of our heart, the desire of the sinful nature. But because the heart is desperately wicked, deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? It is God that knows our heart. That's why it is God that wants to develop us to be as his son Jesus Christ is. To be as he was and as he is now. And what was he? He was a perfect man when he was on the face of this earth. And he was rewarded for his perfection. And he, was, and he paved a way for us to be just as perfect as he is, to be just like him. But the question is, how bad do you want to be like Jesus? How bad do you desire what Jesus is? So that means we have to put away our desires. 
we have to put away selfishness, which is another sin. Why, why all these sins keep coming up? Because that's the wickedness of man's heart. And God wants to save us from our very own selves. We are our worst enemy. I know y'all heard this before. Man, we are our worst enemy. Why? Because we choose to follow our own desire. We choose to make our own plan. It's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. <laughs> wow, holy ghost, holy ghost. It's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. Why? Because our desires and our plans do not line up with the will of God and the plan of God because our, our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. That's why God wants to guide us. That's why God wants to control our lives. It's God that wants to control our lives. Why not let the one who created us control our lives and save us from the very thing that he doesn't want us to dwell in, and that is sin. God does not want us to, hell is not made for man. Hell is made for the devil and the angels that choose to follow him. The lake of fire is made for the devil. The lake of fire is not made for man. But check this out. Check this out. If you choose to follow your own desires and your own plans, how about you're following the devil? That's who you are following. Man is not created to follow himself. Man is created to follow God. But because you choose to follow your own desires, now you are up under another ruler. And he is called the prince of the power of the air. He is the prince of darkness. And that's who you are following. So if you choose not to follow God, you are going to follow the devil. And you're going to end up where he's going to end up in the last day. And that's the lake of fire. And God chooses not for man to be there. God chooses for man to live in eternal life. It is written that the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. And God is talking about man. Man, God has given man the rule over this earth. Like I said, God said be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. For he has given us dominion over all things on this earth. But because of sin, we have given our control to the enemy. Who is deceiving us. Who is deceiving man and making man think that they have control. If man had control over this earth, there would be no hurricane. There will be no tornadoes. There will be no earthquakes. There will be no murdering. There will be no killing. There will be no car accidents. We wouldn't even need cars. We'll be still riding on horses and elephants and giraffes. Because <laughs> God has given us dominion over that stuff. <laughs> We have given up our control of this earth. Because of sin, man has given up control of this earth. So now we have to fight and take back what belongs to us. But how do we fight it? How do we take back control? We do it through the righteousness and the holiness of our Father. God, Jehovah Yahweh, Elohim, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. That is how we take back control over our lives. That is how we take back control over this earth. Do it the way that God has written it down. 
do it the way that God has spoken it. That's how we take back control. That's how we get out of sin. Do the way that God says to do it. Some may say, well, I do it the way that God says to do it. Do you really? You know what I'm saying? I give you charity. But what about, but what about that alcohol you just drunk? What about last night when you got drunk? What about when you laid up with that woman that wasn't your wife? What about when you laid up with that man that wasn't your husband? What about when that man laid up with that other man that he ain't even supposed to be calling his husband for his wife? What about when that woman laid up with that other woman when she ain't supposed to be calling her husband or her wife? See, we do things the way that God does not want us to do it. That's how we lose control. That's how we fall under sin. That's what makes us not good. Okay, I'm gonna go on further. Men may say I'm good, but what about when that person in front of you took too long to drive off because they want to hear this good word that I'm preaching and you're hooking your horn and you're giving them the middle finger. But you say you're a good person. What about that person on your job because they didn't want to do the, your job and then you get mad at them and you call them all sorts of names and all sorts of curses but then you say you're a good person. What about when you went to the club last night and you was bobbing and jumping up and down and slapping women on their tail and sleeping with them without being married? Now you want to say you're a good person. That's not a good person because that's not what God wants you to do. What about when you were in school and you were got into that fight but you didn't repent of, or you didn't apologize to that person for hurting them? You're still not a good person. I can go on and on and on why we're not good people. But we become good when we become under the guidance and the leadership, when we become under the control of the mighty God and Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord and Savior. That's what makes us good. We are not good without the Lord. We cannot come from under sin without God. So go find your church that will teach you the truth. If you want to come to our church, y'all can pull over right now. I got brothers that will help you to learn about God and the things that he wants you to do so that you can have and obtain eternal life. That is what God wants. God wants us to live eternal life with him. And he sent servants such as us that are not afraid, that are not ashamed to tell the truth, that are not afraid, that are not ashamed to say that I'm tired of living a sinful life. And I want to see others get from under that bondage of sin. That is what God called for us to do. That is what God wants us to do. So, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to come from up under sin. Today is the day. Every day you wake up is a day to give your life to God and to not be under bondage of sin. Today is the day. Choose today. Choose now while you have a chance. Tomorrow is not promised to no man. The only thing that is promised is eternal life. So when you die, you have you have a choice. It's your choice. When you die, it's your choice where your soul is going to go. Is it going to go to heaven or is it going to go to hell because you choose to live under sin? So God gave us nine things. God gave us nine things to do that keeps us from 
up under sin. The Lord say, he, it, it is to walk in love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, and temper. If we choose to follow those nine things other than the 17 works of the flesh that was listed and others like it, so I, I, I imagine how many more that Paul had to list. It, he can, you, you can write a whole book on just sin, but God chose to write a book on life and sin so that we no longer have to live under it. So choose you this day whom you are going to serve. For as me and my house, today we're going to serve the Lord. It's in our best interest to serve God, to serve the Lord. God wants you to fulfill your purpose. Your purpose of serving God and seeing the fruit that comes from serving God. When we serve God, the satisfaction that comes from that is comparable comparable to none. God wants your satisfaction to be whole, not temporary. When we are satisfied by the things around us that are not things that are directly from God and what God has commanded that we do, we obtain very temporary satisfaction. And so God wants you to know that in that, it's because of the lack of faith. And God wants to awaken faith in you so that you can be a person that pleases God. Because ultimately without faith, which is true trust in God, true love toward God, true reliance and dependence on God, that's faith. And without faith, no man or woman can please God. You want to be a person that has said he or she pleased God. Because ultimately, without you coming to the realization that you have a responsibility to please the God that has that God, the God that placed everything in your body so that you can have to do all that you do. Many of you, my brother was talking about sin. Do you know that there's a sin that many of you do not understand that is a reality in your life? Since my brother was talking about sin, let's talk about sin for a little bit. Many of us, we look around ourselves and we say, well, no, I'm not guilty of, uh, of, of all sorts of things like going to jail, of stealing, of robbing, of murdering. I'm not guilty of certain things that we can know are blatant crimes against God. Because sin, that's what sin is. Sin is crimes against God. And so many of us, because we don't do some of these blatant things against God, these blatant trans transgressions, sins, crimes, we think that we're okay. But how many of you un understand that God gives you energy? God gives you the ability to do things as far as your body. He gives you what you have in reference to all of the different abilities that you can do, all of the different uh, resources or whatever it is that you have, because God gives to the just and the unjust. God gives to the sinner and the saint. So one of the things that people are guilty of that are not with God or are for the Lord Jesus Christ, we are guilty of 
taking the energy, the resources, and the things that God has given us and using it for things that are contrary to the ways of God. That is called idolatry. When we use the things of God and we don't give God credit for them, when we focus on the things that are apart from God, the things that are not of God, as if they are our life source, as if they are the things that give us energy and whatnot. Many of us, we think that we can beat death. We think that we can do things and exercise to such a degree that we can allow ourselves to not get into specific situations that can happen. We think that being healthy is the way. And I'm not saying healthy is a bad thing. I'm saying that we have to understand that if you devote more time to the health of your body than you do focusing on God, putting your energy, putting your time, putting your thought power into the ways, the concepts, the perspectives of perspectives of God, you're in trouble. God wants us to be in agreement with the fact that God is a God that delights in us accomplishing what he desires that we accomplish. Because many of us have to come to the sheer reality that the meaning to why you were born the meaning to why you exist on this planet is to know the God who, who, who creates existence. If you don't know the God that creates life or existence, then you are not walking according to the purpose and the plan that God has desired for you. It's important that you know the God who even creates the very hairs on your head. You need to be interactive with the God of the universe, with Jesus Christ. Because outside of knowing Jesus Christ, you will fail. Period. Outside of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, your end is certain. Only those who know Jesus Christ. Heaven, a person making it to heaven is not an accident. A person going to hell is not an accident. You will be consistently involved in sin to inherit separation from God and you will have consistently uh, been a person to be involved in the ways of God, in the righteousness of God, in the uh, direction of God, for you to ultimately inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so God wants us to realize that sin is something, or I, let me say crimes against God, perspective, 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 perspective against God, those things are constantly warring against your soul. And so you have a responsibility to war against it. Because many of us, we are slaves to our desires, our feelings, and everything else. We don't realize that because you are a slave, it, it already describes the path that you're going and the end result that you will receive. The Bible says that the wages or the payment for sin is death. The payment for sin, the payment for crimes against God, the paycheck for that is separation from God. It's death. But God doesn't want that for us. He doesn't want sin to reign in your body. He doesn't want you to be a slave to the habitual nature that sin wants to produce in you. He doesn't want you to be a slave to that. He wants you to be alive in him, alive in Christ, because Christ is the one who comes to renew us towards 
the mentality, towards the behavior, towards the lifestyle that is like him and not like the corrupt, the corrupt nature of this world. So if there is a way, according to what my brother was saying, according to the, the Bible, it says there is a way, there is a lifestyle, there is a mentality that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof, or the fruit thereof, or the paycheck thereof, are the ways of death. The ways of corruption. And so God, God bless you. So God wants you to know him, to interact with him, to live through him. Because unless your mind is renewed, you will likewise perish. Unless you're transformed. The Bible says, uh, that we should be renewed in the spirit of our mind. God wants you to be renewed, the spirit of your mind, the, the way, because there is a direction that God wants to change in your life. So don't think that heaven is something that's going to be as given to you. Heaven is not just given to you. Heaven is something that God destines for those that are his sons and daughters. Has, heaven is not just given to you like someone can give you a lollipop, give you an ice cream, give you something. Heaven is predestined for those that are His. And those that hear me and are hungry to know the living God will pursue Him and see the end result of heaven. But those that just think that, well, He's just talking on the microphone, on some speaker, and, and uh, whatever, whatever, I think my way is the best. Understand that if your way is not submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ, is not from the pattern, from the Spirit of God, you will likewise wake up in torment and hell. And so God wants to awaken you because there's a life eternal that is for you if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a perfect sacrifice that is for you waiting for you to obtain it and from there have what you need as far as the ticket to enter in, into everlasting life the signs of the, of the times are around us it's showing us that Jesus is coming soon The word of God says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward, Jesus, his reward is with him. To give every man and woman according to their work, according to what they've done, shall be. And it says, he declares himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And that's a revelation right there. God declares himself as the start and the finish. And the truth is, God is so wonderful that he exists outside of start and finish. Beginning and ending. One of the things that you must know about God is that he lives outside of our reality of life or beginning and death. He lives outside of that. He actually controls the start of something and the finish of something. This is one of the things that we can't understand about God. We, we, most people will say, well, who created God? Who created God? No one, because God lives outside of start and finish. The concept of start and finish comes from God. And God wants you to know that if you trust in Him, 
You can live in total. You can partake of the, of the tree, the, 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 the right tree this time. <laughs> God wants to awaken us to realize who we are through Him. But many of us will allow ourselves to die in sin. We allow ourselves to be slaves to sin forever and receive the consequence that the slaves of sin will have. Eternal punishment and worms that will not die. Will that be you? I don't like worms. I only use worms to fish. But I don't like worms that feed off individuals like leeches. Could you imagine a big old leech attached to your body for all of existence? I don't want you to imagine. I just want you to understand that Jesus Christ is the way to life. Jesus Christ wants you to be saved today. So harden not your hearts. Receive the salvation that God has presented to mankind for mankind to partake of. So God does love you. This is why he gives you time and space to turn from thoughts, perspectives, and ways, lifestyles that are contrary to the ways that he would delight you walk in. It's like a parent that doesn't spank their child immediately. They understand the inconsistency of the child's mentality and they want to train and teach the child in such a way for them to choose good and not continue to choose disobedience. And so God, like a righteous, a good, a loving father, wants you to take this time and be able to turn from sin, turn from the ways that grieve him, trust in him, receive the power that he gives so you can be transformed and live out the lifestyle that he wants for you. But many of us, because we trust and we love the temporary, we will receive eternal damnation. Will you trust in the eternal? Or will you trust in the temporary? For God so loved the world that he gave his eternal son, Jesus Christ. Because he understands there is an eternal reward for receiving the eternal son. But many of us will choose temporary life and receive a fool's reward, which is eternal death. Choose this day. You have the option. We have the option. Choose this day whom you will serve, whether, whether it be the habitual nature of sin that you participate in, or whether it be a forsaking of that sin and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. You cannot live for God and hold hands with Satan and his ways. People say, well, what do you mean Satan and his ways? What do you mean? Like, I'm not bad. My brother just now was talking about some very essential things. He was saying that no one is good because he gets that from God who said also that no man is good. Only God is good. And so you need the power of God to transform you and to give you a new reputation of good. You cannot declare goodness on your own accord. You must declare goodness because you've been given goodness 
the title, the reputation of goodness because it comes from he who is eternally good. God is eternally good and he wants to give you a reputation of eternally good. But you cannot receive that according to your own perspectives. God wants to transform us. He wants to transform you. So those who have ears to hear, will hear. Those who have eyes to see, will see. And the rest will be forsaken of God. So yes, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus, enough understanding to be able to make a conscious decision who you will serve. You have an option. Yes. You have an option. You have a choice. And you can choose to be satisfied temporarily by the temporary possessions you have or you can choose to be satisfied eternally by the God who creates all things, all existence. I choose to be satisfied eternally. The Bible says that I will behold thy face in righteousness and I will be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Eternity, eternal. I'm not satisfied by the satisfactions of temporary things around me. And I don't want you to be satisfied by, by that either. Because it is just that temporary. And there is an inner gratification that I get from temporary things. Like, I feel confident when I'm driving a Rolls Royce. I feel very confident when I'm driving something, a Lamborghini, when I have 10,000 or million dollars in the bank. I feel confident, but the Bible calls that person a fool. Because he's trusting in things that can be taken away from him. He's trusting in things that will rot, that will ultimately be things that will corrupt, they will fall away, they will rip away, the, the, the wind will blow them away, people will take it from you, IRS may take it from you. And so God, even now, he, he's, he's so merciful, he's giving you the opportunity to turn from him. But some of us are allowing the luxuries of life to keep us from truly committing to God. God is not interested in dating. God is interested in marriage. God is not interested in dating. And so some of us, we suffer from all sorts of diseases and plagues and all sorts of issues in our bodies. And we don't go to the healer. We suffer from cancer and AIDS and HIV and all sorts of issues. And we don't go to the physician. We would rather suffer with the disease thinking that we can overcome it. Well, if I spend my money on this medicine, I spend my money on that drug, I spend my money on Prozac and uh, all sorts of uh, oxycodone and things, like I can get over this, this disease. I can pay to get over this disease. But God wants you to know only He can truly cure you of the disease that will cost you your eternal position in heaven. That disease is sin. 
You can't buy your way out. And you surely can't buy your way into heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way for you to be saved. He wants you to be saved. He wants you not trust in your own ability to save yourself. You can't run fast enough. You can't be more persuasive. You can't trick. You can't do this. You can't. You cannot do anything. God bless you. You can't do anything. You know one secret? A lot of people don't realize that the devil is smarter than them. A lot of people don't realize that the devil is smarter than them. And the only way to beat the devil is to submit to the one who gives orders and authority to the devil. You cannot beat sin unless you have power over sin. And who was the one that said that we have power over sin? Only one, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us the power to defeat sin and the, the repercussions and the, the things that sin causes. But many of us, we love sin and we hate the truth. And Jesus Christ is coming to give us the option to further hate the truth and love sin or love the truth and hate sin. And it can't be both because Jesus doesn't delight in lukewarmness. Jesus does not delight in wishy-washy. I mean, well, the truth is you guys don't delight in wishy-washy. In the world, they call that a person being green. Well, a person being green, like, he, he doesn't, he, he, he's this way, he's that way. That, that guy's green. You don't even like green. Why would you think Jesus likes green? Jesus likes the color green, but he doesn't like a person being wishy-washy. One way, two ways, three ways. We gotta just be single. We have to have a single eye. And God wants you to have a single eye, a focused eye. An eye that's only on Him and not on the world. Not on the temporary satisfactions of this life. That's the second time a car broke down right there. That's the second time today a car broke down right there. Holy Ghost. God is the true mechanic. God is the true mechanic. And he can restore you even today. That's what I was talking about earlier. Temporary things. Temporary things. See, cars, they break down. See that? Cars break down. So we can only have some sort of gratification in a car temporary. This is why it's so important that you invest in He that is eternal. Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, invest in eternity and not in temporary. We have pleasure in things that will ultimately break down. But God wants to open our hearts and minds and souls to that which is eternal for us to further experience life through 
God's eternity version of life, not this natural reality of temporary life that we have today. God loves you, but he wants to work in you to the eternal life that he has in store for all those that serve him. Serve him today. Jesus is the That's an example right there. Your car can break down. Your marriage can wither. Your business can fail. Your health can deteriorate. But guess what? My salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ will always be there if I trust and lean on Him. My lifestyle must prove that I'm leaning on the Lord Jesus Christ, that I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I'm not, that I'm trusting in my own works. The Bible says that the, the, the works of man, the things that men do, are as filthy rags, our works, our deeds are as filthy rags. But God's works are eternally satisfying. And so God wants you to not be satisfied with temporary burgers. He wants you to be satisfied with his eternal food. His food that is everlasting and eternal. That's his salvation. God wants to give you an eternal salvation, a, some, some new thing. God wants to give you a new thing. That's why he says you must be born again. Except a man or woman be born again, he or she cannot, will not, see the kingdom of God. And except a man or woman be born of the water and of God's spirit, God's renewing spirit, he or she cannot enter into the kingdom of the living God. So it's vital that you come to know the true and living God because in that you can come to know who you are. Who you are extends beyond your physical body. God wants to awaken you to his truth. His everlasting truth so that you can ultimately live with him everlastingly forever God's everlasting truth is contagious and he wants you to be infected with it because when you're infected with that man you see life in a different way you live life in a different way the things that you do, all that you are involved in is different things. And so God wants to empower you so that your life can represent Him. If your life represents Jesus Christ, then your life is on the right track. If your life represents Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna, Shiva, Gandhi, uh, Mother Teresa, the Pope, if it resembles all of those false prophets, then you ultimately will lose your life. God wants to awaken us from the false prophets that we listen to. There are individuals who will be drowned out by the sound of the world to such a degree that they will be led like there was a a story. The, the, the Piper, what is it, the uh, Peter Piper, or whatever his name was, and how he led uh, led children to their death, I believe. And so this is the same thing with the music of the world. It will lead people to ultimate separation from God. And so it's important for us to know the living God because through knowing him, you can understand your identity. And your identity does not just exist in your first and last name. It, it, it exists beyond physical understanding. 
you must have spiritual understanding to know who you are as far as your identity. If you walk by the spirit, then, and, and not just any spirit, God bless you, not just any spirit. If you walk by the spirit of God, you can ultimately know who you are. But when you don't walk by the spirit, you are furtherly influenced by the spirit of death. And the spirit of death has many devices, and many devices to further subvert and control and keep in bondage people in the ways, in the workings of Satan. So as my brother was saying, choose this day. Choose this day whom you will serve. And you know what? Your life will choose for you even if you do not do not make a conscious decision to choose. Your life will play out who you love. Your life will play out who you love. Jesus Christ is the sole way for you to truly know who you are. I have a dog at home too. But that dog won't separate me from the kingdom of God. That dog will be on the street in a second. I have a little dog. I have a little dog, not a big dog. <laughs> but God wants us to know that there's an identity that that proceeds beyond your physical nature that God wants to introduce you to. And in order for you to be introduced to it, you must, according to Jesus Christ, be born again. So when we're born again, that means that you're spiritually awakened to the ways of God, to the identity of God, to the truth of God, that he delights that you know so that you can ultimately be led in the right direction in reference to your life. So this is why Jesus Christ comes to save, because he comes to renew the mind so that the mind and heart and soul can reflect the nature of the living God. But what we have in us naturally is the nature of the world, the nature of things that cause us to be separated from the living God. And so God wants to awaken us so that we can understand who we are and where we're going. If, you, if a person does not know where they're going in reference to eternal life, if, they, if, if the Bible says, the Bible says, that it is appointed unto every man and woman once to pass from this physical life into spiritual life. See, because death is a transition. So it is appointed unto every man and woman to die. But after the death, there is a transition to a person being in the presence of God and you will have to give an account for what you've done with your physical life on earth. So yes, it is appointed unto every man and woman who wants to die and after this is the judgment, is the confrontation, is the giving of an account of what I've done with the gift of life that God has given me on earth. And I have to have a reasonable answer. What will your answer be? What will your answer be when God asks you, what did you do with the gift of life on earth that he's given you? What will be your answer? If your answer is not that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, I trusted in him, I live for him, and he is alone my salvation, then your answer will not be credible. It will have no weight. You must have the answer that comes from the answer.
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the answer to the question. You have to have the answer to know the answer. You have to have the answer. Do we have the answer? And you know what? Your life is going to demonstrate if you really live out that answer. Because many of us will, will think many of us will think the answer is I did this, I did that, I did this, and I did that. Many of us will think the answer is the works. But only the true sons of God will have the right answer. I have the Lord. And he was living and manifesting himself through my life. And so Jesus Christ doesn't want for you to be separated from true eternal life for all existence. Jesus Christ wants you to be intertwined with God, with him, for all existence. And so he wants you to truly trust in him, truly be connected to him, because he is your only lifeline. Think of the world today like we're on the Titanic. We're on the Titanic and the Titanic is sinking. Jesus is your only lifeboat. You will sink along with the Titanic if you do not get on the Jesus lifeboat, don't do that to yourself. Don't trust that the Titanic will be fixed in time for you to stay on the Titanic and enjoy the luxuries of the Titanic. Understand that the Titanic will fall. America will fall. This world will fall. But, but do you have the trust in Jesus that is necessary for you to escape the damnation that is promised to the Titanic? Do you know that the Titanic, they said that no, not even God could sink that ship? Do you know that the newspaper said that back in 1912, I believe? It said that not even God could sink this ship. It's okay. God sent a, 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 a glacier, a glacier, cut a hole right up in the Titanic and caused it to sink. Don't we know that everything has to be sanctioned by God? And so yes, God did allow that, that iceberg to cut a hole right up, right up in the, the Titanic. And God will allow the Antichrist to come and cut a hole right up in the Titanic of this world. Will you be on the lifeboat? The Jesus lifeboat? Or will you trust in the mechanics of the Titanic? World peace. World peace. They're going to fix the world. We're going to fix America. We're going to make America great again. No, you won't. The Titanic will fall. Will you trust in Jesus? Jesus who will deliver you from the powers of sin. Sin opens doors to destruction, but you don't have to be a victim if you trust in the solution, the answer, the antidote, the Savior Jesus Christ. But many of you will trust in temporary fixes. And that's what addicts do. 